Hello and welcome back to Flute Tube. I had a request several weeks ago by now to do an episode on trill fingerings and pitfalls with trills and I'm finally getting around to it but better late than never. I believe I'm going to call this episode Trill Tricks and Traps. I'm going to start out with the traps part. The trill fingerings that we tend to fall into but we don't want to use. And the very first most important one is when you trill C to D because instead of moving all these fingers we use a trill key but you have to be really careful about which trill key you use. For the C that's in the staff you want to trill C to D using this first trill key, the one that's closest to your face. That's pretty obvious because if you try the second trill key you'll hear that it sounds much too sharp on the D. But here's the trap. When you go up the octave, you want to use that second trill key instead of the first trill key. You change with your octave. The problem that so many people encounter is that when they go up the octave, trilling C to D using this first trill key does not sound too bad. And so they just do it the same in both octaves. But it's actually noticeably flat. You'll just get a better, more in tune trill if you use your second trill key on that higher C to D trill. The next trap I want to mention just because it's in a similar place to deal with on your flute is that if you're trilling C to D sharp, I really prefer to use both trill keys, especially in the higher octave, the C sharp to D sharp above the staff. Some trill charts tell you to just use this second trill key but again, it's a little flat if you don't use both. So C sharp to D sharp, both of these trill keys, not just the second one. Let's cover two more trill traps that are quite related to each other. One is A flat to B flat. Often people will only trill their second finger on their left hand to get from A flat to B flat. But again, pitch wise, that is a little bit flat. You don't have to move your pinky, but I would move both of these fingers so that your B flat is not flat when you trill. As a related trill trap, when you're trilling E flat to F, this is another one. You might be tempted to only move your second finger on your right hand, but that's going to make your F a little bit flat. You really want to move both your second and third fingers. As I'm sure you've figured out already, a lot of these trill traps are about pitch. Here's another trill trap. And in fact, the trap is not about the trill. It's when you're not trilling. And this is it. When you trill E to F sharp that's in the staff, we have this nice little shortcut where instead of moving our fingers like this from the E to the normal F sharp fingering, we just lift our first finger. That is the trill fingering, E to F sharp. I'm not going to tell you otherwise. The problem is when people start to play F sharps this way as a normal thing. If they think that just is simpler and they're gonna do that for all of their F sharps. The problem is again, this F sharp is a little flat. It's not flat enough that we want to make ourselves trill like this. <laughs> That's not practical. So we trill this way, even though that F sharp is a little bit of a compromise. But when you're playing regularly, we don't want to compromise our F sharp unnecessarily. We're going to do the F sharp at the bottom and the top of the staff this way. Have another pair of trill traps to talk about because again they're very related. We're going to go up into the top octave when you trill D to E flat. Many students learn to trill this using this lever. I think that's because it's a little more similar to the real E flat fingering which is this. Instead of moving all these fingers you just move this finger. However, the better, easier trill is to use your second trill key. It's faster, it's smoother, it's less effort than doing this. So you really should use this for the D to E flat trill in that top octave. And the related trill trap is 
high G to high A flat. Same thing that so many students learn to use this finger to trill from G to A flat because it's very similar to the high A flat normal fingering. But the actual way that you want to trill high G to high A flat is with your first trill key. Again, it's much simpler, quicker, your trill will sound flashier and easier. I'm going to mention one more general trill trap. Keep this in mind at all times, no matter what your level, if you're a beginner or advanced, we all have this problem. It is when you trill, continue to count. We're so tempted when our fingers get flopping around to get distracted by them and not count nearly as well. Maybe we are pretty close, but we just arrive on the downbeat a little bit late. Maybe everything slows down because we think we can just fit one more trill in before we're quite done with that note. Check in with the metronome, record yourself, play it back, and make sure that your trills are not affecting your tempo. And by the way, I never hear people speed up as a result of trills. I always hear them slow down because we're trying to fit all those trills in. As far as trill tricks on the happier side of the equation, one great trick is to have a trill fingering chart that you trust and a mentor who can always guide you through trill fingerings. Another trill trick you always want to keep in the front of your mind is to remember all of your options when you're trilling with B flats involved. If you're trilling A flat to B flat, for instance, often people find putting their thumb on this B flat lever feels a little more awkward in your hand. When you're chilling, when you're moving those fingers, your hand just feels a little bit more tensed up. So I like when I can to put my thumb on the B natural lever and then use my right hand B flat lever. I've got an episode on this. If you haven't seen it, you should go look through all your B flat fingering options. For trills, my hands like it. If I push that B flat lever down, put my thumb on the B natural lever, and then move these two fingers. Similarly, if you're chilling A to B flat, you have the option to do this or to do this. And the other trill that this is great for is A sharp to B natural or B flat to C flat. Instead of using the trill this way, it's a little more facile, it's a little faster and easier to catch this B flat lever with your right hand. Give it a try. You don't have to move this finger quite as far. It's a little closer and quicker. It's also a smaller mechanism than moving this whole key. We have another actually pretty huge category of trill tricks. You may or may not have a C-sharp trill key, but if you do, so you have two levers here instead of just your B-flat lever, this C-sharp lever is so great for trills. There's a whole slew of trills you can use, and I do have an episode on that specifically if you want to go watch why get a C-sharp trill key, I believe is what I called the episode. <laughs> I'm not going to list all those trills right here because I already did in that episode, so you can go get the comprehensive list there. But I do want to say one more thing about the C-sharp lever. That is, if you're trilling B to C-sharp and you do not have that lever, sometimes people trill and they leave this thumb down. The problem with that is pitch again that your C-sharp is going to be flat if you leave your thumb on that lever. So really, you want to trill with both your thumb and your first finger on your left hand so that that trill is in tune. But here's why I'm putting this in trill tricks rather than in trill traps. It's because on the upper octave, this does not work in the staff. Your B to C-sharp in the staff, you're stuck with this, you have to do this. But in the octave just above the staff, when you're trilling B to C-sharp, if you do not have that C-sharp lever, you can trill with your first trill key. It works, it sounds almost just the same as trilling with that lever. For today, I wanna to give you a couple more trill tricks. They both actually involve trilling from D sharp to E. The first one is that when you're trilling D sharp to E in your high register, the official trill fingering is that you move your left hand third finger like this. The trick is that you can get that same trill using your right hand third finger instead of your left hand third finger. Depending on context, most people find that this feels a little bit more free, that this finger is a little bit easier to move than this one. Next time you have to trill D sharp to E or E flat to F flat as the case may be, 
Just give it a try moving this finger instead of this finger. My choice often depends on just how busy my left hand has been before that trill. If I'm already a little tired and worn out with my left hand, I will definitely prefer using this instead. The other trill trick is the D sharp to E that's at the top of the staff. And the problem here is this first finger. If you trill the D sharp to the E with this first finger down, that D sharp sounds a little bit covered because for the real D sharp fingering, you lift this first finger off. But if you lift it off, then the E sounds kind of hooty because the real fingering for this E, this should be down. So your compromise trill trick is that if you're careful, you can half hole this key. You can find a place where you're pushing it down just slightly so that this C sharp is not venting as much and both your D sharp and your E sound a little bit more focused and clear. That almost does it for our trill tricks and traps, except I have a bonus for you. And I imagine that none of us can use this trick. This poor right hand pinky often has a lot of work to do on low trills. If we're trilling B to C, we have to do this. If we're trilling B to C sharp, please composers don't do that. We have to go like this. <laughs> if we're trilling C sharp to D sharp, we have to do this. And a lot of composers don't realize how awkward those trills are and we just get stuck with them but we do actually have a solution for low B to C if you've got the right kind of flute. There is a rare flute that was almost never made in history and is still almost never made that has a left hand low B lever. We're used to seeing this one lever here, but the left hand low B lever is a second lever you can push and it will close your low B key. For one thing, it can act like your gizmo key that it will just close the low B, but for another thing, if you're fingering low C and you need to trill the low B, you can use that lever. Isn't that crazy? Aren't you glad you stuck around to the end of the episode so now you know more about flutes than all of your flute friends who did not stick around to the end of the episode? Good work! It pays to watch the entire episode of Flute Tube. And if you're feeling great about knowing now about that low B left hand lever, then give this video a like Subscribe if you haven't yet. And like I say, if you happen to own a flute with a low B left hand lever on it, I will be stunned. So be sure you leave a comment. Happy trilling. I hope you learned something new or at least got some good reminders to check in on your trills. <laughs>